Hello sports fans. Today we're going to work on our second video called chemical compounds and chemical bonds. And it turns out that um, we're, before you do this, you should understand the structure of an atom. So if you don't understand the structure of an atom, go back, watch the first video. If you've watched it once, still don't get it, maybe watch it again or come talk to me before you watch this. But uh, I think you need to understand the structure of an atom before this makes sense. Okay. So let's get right to it. The first question that we really have uh, is what is a, a compound? Okay. Well, here's our fancy definition. A chemical compound is a substance that's formed by the chemical combination of two or more elements in definite proportion. What the heck's that mean? Well, it means this. It means that if you take a couple, an atom by itself, okay, and you take uh, that's not a compound. You take another atom by itself, that's not a compound. You combine them, and it can be a compound. It is a compound, okay? But it's not just willy-nilly. And I guess what I mean by that is this. If this is a hydrogen and this is an oxygen, um, that sounds like something we're used to. What's it kind of sound like? Uh, water? Yeah, perfect. H to O. But uh, if you notice here, there's, there's the oxygen and there's a hydrogen, but this says two and it means two hydrogens, so we need another hydrogen over here, right? Now this is water, okay? Um, let me tell you something. How many hydrogens we have here? We have two. How many oxygens do we have? We have one. That's a definite proportion. If, let's draw it again, if we had this and we have this, act like this isn't here, a little dotted line, right? Is this the same as this? If you're saying yes, stop, because that's not true. This has an extra hydrogen. This has a ratio of one hydrogen to one oxygen. Oh, that's dumb. Uh, let's back that up there. One hydrogen to one oxygen. Okay, that's a one-to-one -one proportion. This is a two-to-one proportion. This is hydrogen peroxide. This is water. Hopefully, you guys are not drinking hydrogen peroxide. If you are, you're dumb. Stop doing that. Okay, Hydro water, hydrogen peroxide. Water, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, that's what's meant by a definite proportion. If it's two to one, it's water. If it's one to one here, it's hydrogen peroxide concerning these elements. That's what definite proportion means. Does that make sense? All right, so what's a compound? It's just the combination of, of, of two atoms that are in a certain, two or more atoms that are in a certain proportion. That's all it is. There you go. Okay. Okay, so earlier I said uh, a chemical compound is a combination of two or more atoms. So when, how are they combined? Well, they're, they're joined together. That's what a chemical bond is. A uh, chemical bond is how those atoms join together. And um, here's a little definition. Chemical bonds are the interaction, and that is so important, the interaction of electrons between atoms. These interactions are what holds the atoms that form a compound together. Now let me let me try to show you what I mean. Um, here's a here's an atom. Has a proton and a neutron and an electron. Okay. Here's another at what what kind is that? That's right, hydrogen. Okay. Here's another one. We'll just say for fun: proton, neutron, electron. A chemical bond is how these two interact. If this electron and this electron do not interact with each other, we don't have a chemical bond. Okay. If this electron moves over here and joins over here, that's one type of chemical bond. If this electron uh, is shared with both, that's a different type. We're going to talk about. Okay, so now that you understand that we have to be combining these two, uh, this electron has to interact with this electron to make a chemical bond. Now that you understand that, we can move on to the types of chemical bonds, okay? So let me uh, clear this out of the way. So what kind of chemical bonds are there? Well, there's lots. There's lots and lots and lots. Well, five or six different types. But what we're gonna deal with is really two, 
for our purposes, we're going to deal with these two. Uh, ionic and covalent. These are our two kinds of bonds that we're going to deal with primarily in this class. Okay, so let's look at an ionic bond. What exactly is an ionic bond? Okay, uh, ionic bond, remember when we looked at the electron earlier, or the atom, let's draw those again. So let's do a hydrogen, or no, this time, to do ionic, I think it works better if we do uh, sodium and chlorine. Okay, so sodium uh, has a bunch of electrons. It has, sodium has 11 uh, electrons, so, and protons, really, 11 protons. So 11 protons which means 11 neutrons, unless it's an isotope, which right now it's not, okay? That means it has 11 electrons, it should, okay? So let's start here. We've got how many in the first shell? Two, okay, let's draw that. Let's change the color so we don't get confused. First shell's blue, okay. Now, in the second shell, how many we have? Eight. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember, all these electrons don't like each other, so they're going to spread out evenly around here, as far away from each other as they can. Let's draw a nice little orbit around that. Show the shell. Do red for the second one. Yay. Okay, now that's all happy. Now let's look at the third one because that's 10 electrons. We still got one more electron, which means we got it out here. Okay, and this is our last shell. This, well, last shell for this type deal. We're out here. We're looking, at, there's our green one. We got one in that shell. Okay, now to be in Happyville, which is just my made up word for the state that an atom is most satisfied in. Um, to be in Happyville, it, it turns out that an electron, this shell, it, it likes to have its shell full. So it either wants this shell full or non-existent, okay? So it would love to get rid of that electron. Now, remember that. We're going to come right back to that. Because over here in this corner, we have chlorine, which has 17 protons and 17 neutrons. And here's our nucleus, which is larger, if you notice, than that. And that's really true. Uh, we've got two electrons. Let's see how best I can do this. Um, blue. Okay. First shell. Second shell has eight. Eight. Okay, that's what red. It's our second shell. Okay, and then our third. So that's ten. So we need seven more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do that. There's our. Third shell. Okay. Now it turns out this one's not in Happyville either because it's almost full, but not quite. It has seven. It wants eight in this third shell. This one's nowhere near full. It needs seven to be full, but it, it's not going to get seven <laughs> probably right now. So what it, what it does is it turns out that this one gives this electron over to it, gives it to here. Okay. So now we have eight electrons here, but wait a minute, that's 18 electrons and there's 17 protons. So if that's 18 negative charges and 17 positive charges, that makes an ion. Okay, remember when we said there's more or less electrons than protons is an ion? In this case, we have that negative one charge, okay? This is a negatively one charged ion. This, on the other hand, has also changed the dynamic here. It used to have 11 electrons. It gave that one away so that it's in Happyville. It's got rid of that empty shell. Now it's full here. But that means it only has 10 electrons 
it has 11 protons. That means it has a plus one charge, okay? Now, I don't know how much you know about electricity and so forth, but uh, opposites attract. Positive is attracted to negative, okay? So there's a positive one, there's a negative one. These two are attracted to each other. That means what happens is, is that electric charge kind of pulls these two close together and they hang out really close to each other. And that's an ionic bond. It's that electrical attraction between ions, right? Between ions. That's what it is. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope so. Let me clean this up and I'll tell you about a covalent bond. Okay, let's talk about covalent bonds, okay? Now, covalent bonds, uh, it's, it's a little different. This is um, where electrons are shared. Instead of one giving it up totally and the other one taking it totally, um, this one, they actually share the electrons. So let me demonstrate. Um, let's, this works real well with uh, water. So let's go back to that hydrogen. You've got one proton, you've got one neutron here in the nucleus. And you have one electron here uh, in our first shell. Because it would like to have two electrons, it is not in Happyville, right? This is hydrogen. Okay. Over here, we have oxygen. It has eight protons in the nucleus, eight neutrons. That's an oxygen. And then let's uh, do the electrons. So in the first shell, <clears throat> that one's full, so it has two. Okay. Then uh, in the second shell, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Turns out there are six in this second shell because uh, that makes the eight that matches the protons. Okay, <clears throat> so here's our basic setup. We have oxygen, we have hydrogen. Well, it turns out that in certain atoms, and I'll be honest, I don't know why sometimes they give it up and sometimes they share, but in, the, in this case, they share. Um, what happens is, is this electron ends up going around both nucleuses. So it goes around here. Let's see if I can find a... I'll use green to demonstrate the path. It goes around here, and then it goes around here, and then it goes around here, and then it goes around here, and it keeps doing that. It goes around both, and so that electron is shared. Now, at, so if you think about that, um, so is this electron. This electron is shared. It goes around here, and then it goes around here, and then here, and then here. Now it turns out that that means that part of the time that electron's here and this one's here, that gives that two. That makes this happy. So Happyville is achieved. Sort of like Nirvana for atoms. Happyville, okay. Um, meanwhile, this electron's here and these six are here and that gives it seven wait a minute that's seven it needs eight well that's why hydrogen or water has two of these suckers because basically uh, here's our nucleus for the other hydrogen here's our first shell with an electron and electron here's our second shell with an electron and electron 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 what happens is, is it shares one with this one and then it shares this electron with this one. So it goes around there, comes up around here, boom. So it's sharing with, it's got one electron that shares with this one, one electron that shares with this one. That ends up, that's stupid. This is supposed to be hydrogen. Oop, okay, let's fix that. Maybe I won't be as dumb. Let's we'll see. Well, let me do this. Yes. All right, let's try this again. A proton, a neutron. See what happens when you do shortcuts. There, there's the electron. This electron goes there now. Turns out this electron spends part of the time here. This electron spends part of the time here. Part of the time it circles here. Part of the time it circles here. Boom, like that. 
This one does the same thing. Part of the time it circles here, part of the time it circles here. So this covalent bond, there's two covalent bonds going on. One with this atom, one with this atom. The point is, is these two electrons are being shared between these two atoms. These two electrons are being shared between these atoms. That means that part of the time this has two electrons around it, it's in Happyville. Part of the time, thanks to this guy, there's eight electrons here, it's in Happyville. And then part of the time, there's eight electrons going around here, or I'm sorry, two electrons going around here, it's in Happyville. So that's how a covalent bond works. So covalent bonds are sharing of electrons. Ionic bonds are when one atom gives up the other one, makes them both ions. Those oppositely charged ions are attracted to each other. Does that make sense? Okay, well, let me add a couple more things, then I'll stop. Turns out that, um, whoops, sorry. Turns out that sometimes with certain molecules, they can share more than just these two electrons. They might share, let's say this guy was a different atom. Let's say he's helium, and uh, helium has another electron, right? two protons, two neutrons, and this is oxygen. It might turn out that th this electron, this electron are shared, and this one and this one, so four are shared. That's a double covalent bond. Double. Believe it or not, sometimes even three electrons from this one, three from this one are shared in a different type of atoms. That's a triple. Triple are stronger than double greater than double and double is greater than single covalent bond okay but covalent bonds are all stronger than ionic bonds got it see how confused you are now um okay that's about it hang on okay i'm almost done i need to talk to you about one more thing van der waals force or van der waals forces you'll hear this a lot this is uh, how, um, I mean, this is kind of how, you, you like, you ever see a spider that can climb up something real sheer or, or Spider-Man or um, uh, a gecko, like a gecko can hang on to glass. This is how they do it. But uh, I'll go into more detail, like in the Prezi about that. But just real quick, what I want to point out to you is, okay, you've already learned about a, a covalent bond where this electron spends part of the time going here and part of the time going here. And this electron spends part of the time here and part of the time here. Well, if you remember, it turns out that, um, you know, electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged, okay? And these guys like each other. Well, the protons can't move, but the electrons can. Now, if you were this electron, would you want to hang out with one proton or eight protons? So let me put it this way, boys. If you were uh, on a desert island, would you want to be on a desert island with one pretty girl or eight pretty girls? And of course, we can flip this. Young ladies, desert island, one guy, eight guys, okay? Uh, no judgment about morality here. I'm just trying to make a point. Okay, of course, the point is, is that the electrons actually would prefer to be where more protons are. The, the attraction is greater. It's stronger. So this electron is still attracted to this and still spends time here, but then it spends more time here. Maybe goes a little slower, maybe makes a second pass, then goes here pretty quickly, then goes back. Oh, yeah, how you doing? All right, good to see you. Yeah. You know, okay, and that's that's the same thing. This guy, a little bit more here, a little bit more there. Well, if if you think about that, there's going to be times where it kind of looks like this, where we have the proton neutron in the middle, and no electrons, and over here, we've got the eight protons and the eight neutrons, and I'm not going to draw all of it, but we've got eight electrons over here. Okay, so. This one, um, you know, if you think about it, this one's got a little bit more of a negative charge because there's more electrons here. So this end of the, of the compound, which when these guys join with a covalent bond, we call that a molecule, by the way. Molecule. So this molecule of water has a, more electrons on this side, so we call it negative. And it... Even though there's more protons here, most of them are balanced. 
this has no electrons, so it actually gets a little bit of a positive charge. Well, it turns out that this water molecule, and of course over here you've got another one that's you know, doing the same thing, right, because it's water. So the two outside edges are positive and the middle is, is negative. Um, this positive is going to attract an oxygen atom on a different water. And there's its hydrogen, right? And there's its hydrogen. And this part's going to be attractive because it's negative. So they're going to be attracted. And then over here, you got the same thing. Little hydrogen, little hydrogen. These are positive. These are positive. This is negative. So this is going to be attractive, OK? Well, this attraction between molecules, not inside the molecule, but between molecules of positive and negative that's created because electrons like to hang out more where there's more protons, that's a van der Waal force. And that's going to become a big deal when we talk about water. I know it's probably confusing right now, but I've also gone over my uh, self-appointed time limit. So I'm going to stop, but look at the Prezi and see if that makes sense. And then talk to me and make sure that makes sense. But you should understand what a van der Waals force is. All right, thanks for your patience. I know there's a lot in this. I hope it all worked. Let me know if you have questions. Peace out.